God bless you, and welcome to another episode of God at Work. And, you know, over the past couple of weeks, since we last did the program on Pastor Karen Connolly from the Isle of Wight, I had so many people that have requested and asked for an update how Karen's doing. So I want to give you an update, but in doing so, I also want to give you a little bit of the history of how we connected it in the first place, because others did ask, hey, how did you get to know about this person in the Isle of Wight, et cetera, et cetera. So I'm going to give you a little history as to how we actually met and started getting to know each other and the knowing of the need that Karen has right now. But I'm going to ask Jerry, if he, first of all, if he would do the song Footprints in the Sand for me. La 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 I dreamed that I was walking along the sands of time It seemed I saw my whole life flash before my eyes The one who walked beside me Gently led me by the hand Together we walked onwards Left our footprints in the sand And looking back it seemed In times of heartbreak and despair I only saw a single set Of footprints walking there When I questioned him beside me were you really always near? The answer that he gave me Still echoes in my ear Footprints in the sand Walking side by side Walking on forever With Jesus as my guide All the time I thought I walked alone But his voice so kind Said that single line of footprints Was when I carried you La 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 Through every time of disappointment Every time of lonely tears there's one thing ever constant, never changing through the years. There's a love that's so much stronger than our weary mortal frames. There's a love that sees our weakness and loves us still the same. And even though the storms may blow across the windswept sand, and even when our trials may seem so hard to understand There's a voice that whispers softly With a promise all sublime I am with you always until the end of time Footprints in the sand Walking side by side Walking on forever With Jesus as my guide So many times I thought I walked alone But His voice so kind and true Said that single line of footprint Was when I carried you Footprints in the sand Walking side by side Walking on forever With Jesus as my guide So many times I thought I walked alone But His voice so kind and true Said that single line of footprints Yes, that single line of footprints was when I carried you When I carried you
that single line of footprints was when I carried you. You know, and in talking with Karen over these last several weeks, it's, it's been amazing watching this person with the medical issues going on. And yet she seems quite peaceful most of the time, realizing that he is the one that carries her through this. He is the one that will walk hand in hand with her and he's the one that will carry her when necessary. You know, and I was thinking about when I first met Karen and I first ended up on the Isle of Wight, it was quite an unusual thing. Um, a fellow from their church, True Vine Church, um, a brother from that church sent me a message asking a question about something. And I was going to be in the not too distant future over in the UK to do some meetings. And um, there were several changes in those meetings. But I asked, said, would you like me to just jump on over to the Isle of Wight? And it would just be an easy hop, skip and a jump over there, you know, and I could come and be with you guys for a day if you'd like. And uh, he jumped at it and said, that would be wonderful. Let's, let's do it. And then when I got there and I realized it wasn't just a hop, skip, and a jump to get over to Isle of Wight. It was to get from the area that I was in, up around Horsham, Crawley, that area, down to Southampton, and then from Southampton catch a ferry over to the Isle of Wight. And then, and you had to, when you got to the ferry dock at Southampton, it was quite a long walk to get out to the ferry itself and then the ferry over, and then get picked up on the other side when I arrived on Isle of Wight. Except, so it was not an easy trip. And then I was thinking, but you know, as in the last program where we talked about Karen's health, and we mentioned that she had to do that twice a day, every day when she was going over for her treatment, when she was going over for her, her um uh, radiation treatments every day, twice a day. And I thought, hey, that was a killer just doing it once to get over here and once to get back over to the mainland. And she did that every single day. But it's amazing how she could keep going through it. And as she shared, the last time it wasn't easy. That's for sure. But in the time when I got over there and the meetings that were set up, it was one day of meetings, three meetings, and then a leader's a dinner for some of the congregation and leaders later on. And so I got there for the meetings and I wasn't really sh quite sure because I, I didn't know, I knew didn't know this church well at all. And I wasn't quite sure what they would be looking for, but they wanted something on hearing the voice of God and learning how to hear the voice of God. And so that was the direction I ended up going. But, but the meetings were held in a school where they were meeting regularly at that time. They didn't have their own building yet. So this is a picture of the meeting room. Anyway, it was a bunch, some of the people, half part of the room. And um, I spoke one of the meetings, I was speaking from First Chronicles chapter four. And at the very end of it, it was talking about how they were there, occupied in the service of the king. And all, and as I explained, for many years, I had thought they were talking about the K, capital K, king. And then when I started looking, every translation I read on it, it was a, not a capital K. It was a small K. And so I went searching it out a little bit. And it was, they were talking about being occupied in the service of the one over their area, over their congregation, over what they were doing. And so at the end, I asked if the pastor, Pastor Mike Connolly, Karen's husband, would come forward. And, you know, Karen at that time, she was quite sick already. They had seriously at that time damaged her thyroid and she was really struggling. They hadn't diagnosed what was going on yet. They didn't know about the brain tumors. But um, this was back in 2010. So, and so they hadn't quite diagnosed what was going on, but they were they were practicing, as Jerry says, practicing medicine and trying all these different things and destroyed her thyroid and everything else. But um, so I called Pastor Mike for because I didn't know how Karen's health was doing and how strong she was, whether she was even there at that point. So Mike came forward and then I asked some of the leadership, the elders, etc., of his church to come forward, representing the congregation, you know, committing to be there 
upholding him, praying for him, lifting him up, serving the vision that God had given to that man. And so they all came forward. They were praying for There's a picture here where they were came forward and praying for Pastor Mike. And then as we prayed for him, and then at the end, finished praying for him, you can see the congregations all joining in as well. There they are with their hands raised up toward Pastor Mike, committing themselves to be there in support of what Pastor Mike was doing. But then at the end, God gave me a word for him. And in the next picture, I was giving him this word. And Karen just actually, we, we were talking about those meetings. And she sent me a message saying, she says, and you gave my husband a word. And she said, it was so, what was desperately needed at that point. It was so timely and needed. And it was right on. And so it's amazing what God will do in times like that. But there we were praying, praying for Mike. And then another one of the meetings, at the end of the meeting, God also told me very specifically, because from, from some of what I've been speaking about, um, that there was a lot of people that were there that had past hurts that they were in bondage to. Some of them, they'd been buried for many, many, many years, but they'd just been buried and not been able to talk about them, but also not freed from them. And so God told me that all those who had past hurts that had been really harassing them, tormenting them, and bothering them, some for many years, some recent, but some for a long time, to call them forward and pray for them. So I did. And I called them forward and was praying for these deep embedded wounds that they had not hurt so that they would be set free from. And there was this one lady, she just was crying and crying and crying. You know, some of the people thought she was actually demonized and the demon, but it wasn't. She was just in such deep pain. And in praying for her, and the Lord showed me that she had been abused many, many years earlier. It was like 40 years previous. And she had been carrying this pain for over 40 years. But that day, God set her free, completely free from the torment that she had been living in, from all of the pain that she had been carrying. And it, she was at a one that every time that particular subject was brought up anywhere, the pain would just surface and she'd be weeping. But that day, the weeping wasn't in vain. The weeping wasn't just another step along the road. The weeping and the prayer set her free from the torment that she was living. Here's a group of them when they came forward. When they came forward, all of them had deep embedded pain, wounds that had many been tortured by for years. Some it was just, just a surface thing. Others, they were so deeply embedded that they didn't go a day without feeling the pain from it. But what God does, when he sets someone free, he does it well. And the woman that was set free from the 40 years previous abuse, I heard from her several times after. I haven't heard from her recently, but I did hear from her several times and how God had completely set her free and delivered her from it to the point that she hadn't had that pain ever since up until the last time I heard from her, and I don't know anymore. But it was just amazing what God does. When he does it, he does it well. I love the scripture where it says, he who the sun sets free is free indeed. One of the Spanish translations that actually says, he who the sun sets free is truly, truly free. I love that because when the sun does set you free, you can trust and count on him, knowing that he doesn't play games with his gifts. He didn't show me her pain just to play games with it. He showed me it to set her free from it. And then after the three meetings that day, at the end of the three meetings, we had a beautiful time, prayed over the meetings and prayed over the congregation and what God would be doing with them. There's a picture at the end here, praying for the people and seeing what God was doing in their lives has been amazing. But through that time, the fellow that actually got in touch with me at first and I have been in contact several times and he has Actually, the cover photo from today, he's a photographer. The cover photo, the thumbnail from today's program was a photo that he took. And um, his name's Christian. And he 
very, very clearly set goals and vision that he has for that church and that ministry. Praise supports that ministry in amazing ways, praying for them, up, uplifting the pastor, etc. And watching what God's been doing in that time is just wonderful. But seeing what Karen's been going through all of these years and knowing that she, one of the main things I'd really like you to keep, not only keep praying for her healing, but keep praying that she hears and gets a response from the doctor that her, her doctor sent the no, no, information up to looking for freedom, looking for a solution, looking for someone that could help her. And so she's waiting to hear back any news from them. You know, she's already been turned down by a couple of hospitals saying there's nothing we can do. And her surgeon's saying, I can't operate. It's way too dangerous. That's too dangerous. But he sent it up to this friend of his up in Sheffield. And she's waiting to hear from them. So keep in prayer that she gets news quickly as to what's going on. But she was saying that, you know, she's had days where she's felt quite a bit better since we've been praying for her. And she thanks you all. She's so thankful for the prayers that you guys have been putting up and the word that you've been spreading as far as you can. Keep doing it. I'm going to put a link up in the in the bio, in the description to the program where we were actually sharing her entire story so you can see what, what's really going on. But keep in prayer. Keep spreading that word as much as you can. And remember that there is nothing impossible for God. You know, I look at situations to do with healing, and sometimes I wonder, you know, well, God, why are you choosing to do it this way, or why are you choosing to do it that way? I don't know. But what I do know is that when we pray and put our hearts into praying for that situation, whatever the outcome is, we have to trust that it's God, that God knows what he's doing, that he knows best. So please keep praying for Karen. I know she had a really rough day a couple of days ago. She was in a grocery store and her head felt like it was going to explode, she said. And she just got to the checkout counter and had to get help because she couldn't keep going. She was in so much pain and, and had to get home. She got home and went straight to bed. She was couldn't keep going. And so she's having still having ups and downs, so we've got to keep praying and upholding her in prayer, knowing that whatever steps happen along the way, no matter what goes on, that God knows, and it's in his hands. We're doing our part. We can't heal the sick, but we can pray, which is what we've been commanded to do. So let's keep praying for Karen. Please keep her in your prayers. Keep doing what you can do, what you've been commanded to do. Pray for the sick as we know that as we're praying, God has it in his hands as to what's being done. And a, a friend of mine from England, Pastor Colin Urquhart, who's since gone to be with the Lord, he wrote a book, Experiencing the Presence. And in, what, in, in, in it, one of the chapters that he wrote on was entitled, The Fact Versus the Truth. Now, in Karen's situation, the fact is, medically, those brain tumors are there. Medically, what's going on is happening. That's a medical fact. You know, we can deny it all we want, but it is a medical fact. But the truth is, no matter what that medical fact is saying, the truth is that by his stripes, we are healed. So let's keep Karen in prayer as we keep believing for that healing. And there's a song that I've asked Jerry if he will close with that it's one of my favorites. And it's so often when we find ourselves in situations that are adverse situations, hard situations, we want to run away and say, you forget it. I can't keep going. But this song is called, Whither Shall I Go from Your Spirit? You know, it says, whither shall I go from your spirit? Whither shall I flee from your presence? Cherry, whither shall I go, please?
Even though I ride the wings of the morning And dwell in the depths of the sea You will always be there to love and guide me Your strength will always support me Shall I go from your spirit? Whither shall I flee from your presence? I could never be lost to your spirit. I could never go away from God. You've examined my heart and my thoughts Everything is known by you You chart the paths ahead and tell me where to rest Every moment you know where I am Shall I go from your spirit? Whither shall I flee from your presence? I could never be lost to your spirit. I could never go away from God. Shall I go from your spirit? Whither shall I flee from your presence? I could never be lost to your spirit. I could never go away from God. I could never be lost to your spirit I could never go away from You know, that is one thing that I have truly loved in talking with Karen, praying for her, etc., is that she realizes that no matter what is going on in her physical body, she can never go away from God. It's a time not to try and run away and flee. It's a time to grab closer and tighter, knowing that he is our hope. He is our only solution. In this type of situation with Karen, he really is her only solution. And she knows that. And so she is holding tight to him. Whither shall I go from your spirit? Whither shall I flee from your presence? No, not at all. Don't flee. Grab tighter. No matter what situation you find yourself in, sometimes you might feel like fleeing. I know there's times that I have, even in the not too distant past, times I felt like I just got to get out of here. And yet I know I can't flee from his presence. I need to grab tighter, hold tighter, be firm in my stance. And so do you, no matter what it is you're going through. Karen has realized that and is standing firm in her stance that she can't go away from his spirit. She can't flee from him, but she needs to draw closer and tighter to him. So let's pray. I want to pray specifically for Karen right now. Heavenly Father, I thank you so much for my friend Karen, Pastor Karen Connolly from the True Vine Church in Isle of Wight. And Lord, you know more than anyone what she's going through. You know the situation that she's in more than any of us do. 
But Lord, we know that you are in control. Lord, I thank you that Karen, her life, her days are in your hands. And Lord, like when, when you healed me with the leukemia all those years ago, I didn't know. You know, the doctor said I had two to three months, and I didn't know what I had. But what I did know is that I had to hold close and tight to you, knowing that my life was in your hands. And 25 years later, I'm still here. So I know, God, that you know what the need is. You know what is coming down the road. You know what is up in Karen's life. And Lord, I pray that right now, your healing power, your Holy Spirit, will flow through her entire being right now. That every tumor, Lord, will be dissolved and be removed from her brain, Lord. And Lord, however you choose to do it is up to you. However you choose to do it, Father. Whether you choose to do it instantly, sovereignly, over time, use doctors, however you choose to do it, Father, it is in your hands. But we know that her life is in your hands. So, Father, I ask that you will continue to strengthen her, remove the pain, remove the inflammation, remove the discomfort. And, Lord, even the times when she feels like she's going to pass out or have a seizure, Father, touch that area of her brain right now, that she will be set free from those seizures. And that, Lord, she will see your hand working in her, not only working in her, Lord, but working through her as she carries on reaching out to others with the gifts that you've given her, Lord. Thank you for her life. Thank you for her heart for you. And thank you for the heart you've given her for people or the heart of compassion that you've placed within her for others, Father. Continue to use her each and every moment, Lord. Strengthen her now, I ask, as your hand is upon her. May those around her gather in prayer for her, Lord. And may all those who have heard her story pass it on as far as they can and continue to pray as we see your hand in her life, in this entire situation, in your precious name. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Well, if you have been touched by this, by God through this message, and you would like to sow into this ministry so we can carry on doing what God has called us to do, Father, I ask that you will touch people's hearts and speak to them, Lord. That if it is your desire that they sow into this ministry, they will do so. And Jerry will put the instructions up onto the screen as to how you can do that if God is leading you. So God bless you and we'll see you next week. Ciao.